Liz. Lynette been talking about the wet weather on the way, but it should uh, begin long after the rush hour is done. So you have dry commute for now as the sun comes up. Everything runs just fine into Catonsville on the west side of the Beltway. The uh, car is coming towards you off there in the distance of the Loop as you work your way in towards 40 West. You'll really you'll move at a good clip coming all the way down from 795. No issue spotted. Watch for the collision smack dab in the middle of downtown. It is Lombard and light. That's your time saver traffic. Christian Megan. All right, thank you, Liz. Well, if you want to help out the next generation of baseball, football, maybe lacrosse players, consider donating your old sports gear. We are holding an equipment drive with the organization called Leveling the Playing Field. They restore used sports equipment and then give it to young athletes for free. Their warehouse, very impressive, but we want to fill it up even more. So the donation drive is this Wednesday at Honey Go Run Regional Park in Perry Hall. And just scan that QR code there on your screen, and that'll give you all the details on how you can help out. We'll keep you up to date on what leveling the playing field is collecting, things you can donate, even money you can donate. Anything will help students uh, to get out there and play the sports they love. Well, there's so many sports that they just don't have access to because some of the equipment's really expensive. Absolutely. So, you know, this would really help a lot of kids with a sport that they might have been good at that they may not have ever done in the first place. We'll give them a chance. Yeah. Coming up in our next half hour, John Matarese has some tips if you're thinking about leasing your next car. But up next, a deadly crash caught on a surveillance camera. We're going to hear from neighbors who say that area is dangerous and it's only a matter of time before this happens again. Six twenty-four. right now there are many parts of the country where cases of the coronavirus have started to rise again. A big question facing the CDC though is how to regain more public trust following years of public debate over their guidance. Joe St. George takes a look at what the CDC is trying to do right now so that the next time a new variant emerges, you don't second guess their guidance. You know, government buildings were constructed to command respect. After all, these columns are majestic. But the reality is that many Americans don't respect government these days. And while Congress and politicians are used to it, many government health agencies are not, like the CDC which is why they're conducting a review to try and change that. Over the last two years, you've heard a lot about the CDC, the nation's top authority on diseases and outbreaks, but you've also likely heard a lot of controversy about the agency, too. It's just incorrect information. First, there were public yeah, disagreements. I really do think it's important to clarify this. Major uh, clarifications. I want to discuss some of CDC's strategies. And at times, confusing guidance in both the Biden and Trump administrations. At one point this year, the American Medical Association sent out this press release saying the CDC's guidance is confusing. While the CDC has been instrumental in increasing testing and administering vaccines, the agency has lost some public trust along the way. According to recent polling before the pandemic, 69% of Americans believed what they heard from the CDC now that has fallen to 44%. Recently, the agency acknowledged change is needed. On April 11th, the CDC began a one month structural review to see what can be done differently. Jim McCray, who previously held senior roles in public health for the federal government, is leading the effort. It will conclude early next month, and that is when the agency will begin to consider implementing changes to how they operate. I spent most of my career working for the CDC. Dr. John Andrus is a leading researcher and epidemiologist. He says one of the most needed changes is figuring out a way to make public health less political. CDC should be protected as a scientific agency. So science is not politicized. Another change, figure out a way to get local health departments to listen more closely to what the CDC advises. Again, the pandemic showed just how powerful local public health agencies are and how some are willing to ignore the CDC's advice. It's not enough for an expert to stand up and say, this is what needs to be done. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Okay, it is 627 right now. If you ever want to look inside the huge Mormon temple near D.C., you'll get your chance soon. That story's coming up. Plus a cold start to the week, but hopefully looking better by the weekend. Meteorologist Lynette Charles will break it all down for us in her super seven-day forecast. You're watching Maryland's first television station, WMAR 2 News. Now, good morning, Maryland. Anything that you want to do as a person crossing the street, she did it. Concerns about speeding on the road led to a woman's death. What neighbors say needs to happen to prevent this from happening again. This morning, there's new information on a settlement between the city of Baltimore and the family of the local high school football player who died after being injured in a game. 
And they're small in size, but a huge nuisance to boaters and homeowners, the efforts today to make the Back River midge-free. 6.30 right now on this Monday morning, April the 18th, alongside Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles and Megan Knight. I'm Christian Schaefer, and Megan has seen my Mayfly video uh, from a live shot I did in Harrisburg about 15 years uh, ago. Lynette has not seen that yeah, yet. And she's fine. But I have it right no, here. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those nights, it was an 11 p.m. live shot, and you're right along Susquehanna River, so there are so many of these Mayflies. It was, I had a lot, I had them on, on me, on my oh, suit. Yeah. But then it's really my photographer, Paul Parmalee, great guy, mm -hmm. and he was just covered. Yeah, I mean, they were, because yeah. you got those lights. Yeah. So, yeah. Ugh. Those, so those are the ones that, like, you can see them, like, swarming, like, they just fly. Yeah, that, and they don't really small. do anything. They don't bite or right. anything, but, but there's just, just so many I don't like of the, them. I don't like anything that has too swarming. Yeah, so disgusting. we'll see if this works, what they're doing in eastern okay. Baltimore County to try to get rid of some of them, you know, <laughs> because work. it can be... Yeah, a lot well, if for you're out in the summer yeah. boating, like that's annoying. You don't have to deal with that. Yeah. So and your anyway. mouth is open. Well, maybe they don't like cold, so you can go <laughs> right, out there maybe today. This will help. Well, there will be no midges. I, I know today, but I mean, summertime, we want summer. We don't want it cold then, right? <laughs> no. Yes, we actually have uh, the feeling of summer as we go into uh, the weekend, guys. So perfect timing for that. I'm going to show you that in the Super 7 Day in a matter of moments. But before all that happens, boy, are we talking about some chilly temperatures for today. So a chilly rain is going to be upon us as we move into the afternoon. I'm going to see I'm being really optimistic with that 50 degrees. We'll struggle to get to that 50 for today. The commute to work. This is good news this morning as the rain not out there quite yet, and we will start you out with a little bit of sunshine, but going home. Boy, is that going to be a problem this evening? And you can see as we head towards Tuesday, temperatures bump up a little bit more 56 degrees. That's the high there, but outdoor activities still may be on the coolish side. Plenty of sunshine to be had as we head towards tomorrow. And even as we work our way into your Wednesday, Day. Temperatures will sc scoot up into the low 60s before it's all done on your Wednesday. And then we're headed to the 70s, Liz, as we head into next week. It's an easy scoot on the roadways to Lynette. Volume begins to fill in on the west side of the Beltway. I'll get to that in a second. But here's the location of a crash downtown, right in the middle of the Inner Harbor. A couple cars collided, had several medics responding to the popular intersection of Lombard and Light. Now, as I take you over towards the west side of the Beltway, you can see the sun brightly shines and volume begins to thicken up on the Adeloupe heading right around I-70. It's busy to 40, but right out of Catonsville, it lightens up. That's your time saver traffic. Christian, Megan. Okay, Liz, thanks very much. 632 right now, a 68 year old woman is dead after being hit by a car last week on Bel Air Road in Northeast Baltimore. Yeah, the woman was crossing the street when a driver veered into the opposite lane, ran right into her. This surveillance camera mm. catching the entire thing on video. Witnesses believe the driver was speeding and as WMAR2 News' Ray Strickland reports, they say something needs to be done about this reckless driving before another person is killed. Why are you going to be careful and all of a sudden get killed for no reason because of a reckless driver? The crash that killed a 68-year-old woman on Bel Air Road Wednesday will haunt Ali Ascari for a long time. I could not sleep the whole night. Seriously, I could not. Ascari owns a nearby business and his surveillance camera captured the horrific accident. Everything that you want to do as a person crossing the street, she did it. Baltimore police say a car hit the 68-year-old woman around 4.16 p.m. in the 4700 block of Bel Air Road. Ascari's video shows what happened from multiple angles. First, you can see the driver losing control of the car. Then it veers into the opposite lane and hits the 68-year-old woman who was crossing the street. Did you see? We decided not to show when the woman was hit because it's too graphic, but the impact of the crash was so loud it caught the attention of multiple witnesses who rushed to the scene to help the victim. She came straight in here and hit her. Seeing her lying in there in the ground and um, situation where she was at, it wasn't, it's, it's just like, it's, it's sad, that's all I can say. Fatia Morapti was one of the witnesses and believes the driver who hit the victim was speeding. She says reckless driving is a huge problem in this area. All the time, like in this area, we almost every day is accidents. It's just uh, it's like it's a busy, line, it's busy uh, road and um, uh, people speeding. 
It's like I said, it's almost every day. Marapti and Iskari say the city needs to put up speed cameras and maybe even more traffic lights to get drivers to slow down. They believe it could save lives. What happened that day is it just, you don't want it to happen again and you don't want to see nobody and that, um, in that situation or anybody lose his life of something, it shouldn't be happening in the beginning. Let them be obvious. Let them know that this camera is there. It's just, that's how they know when the camera is there, they slow down. And that was Ray Strickland reporting. Now, earlier in the month, we did another story hearing the same concerns from people living on Moravia Road, which is less than a quarter mile away from where this happened. A man was hit but did survive. Neighbors also blamed speeding in that crash. 635 right now, Baltimore City leaders will vote this week on a $345,000 settlement with the parents of the high school student who died after being injured in a football game. Elijah Gorham attended Mervo, played wide receiver for their football team, and he got that head injury during a game last fall and later died. The family has now agreed to that settlement if it will release all claims against the mayor, the city council, and the city school board. This is according to an agenda item on the city's board of estimates this week. That board is scheduled to vote on that item this Wednesday. Mervo, by the way, went on to win the state championship and dedicated that to Elijah Gorham. Well, this morning there's a concern that the population of midges on and around the Back River in eastern Baltimore County could be even larger than normal this year. There's been problems with the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant today. The Baltimore County executives announcing a program that could at least deal with the flies. WMR 2 News Abby Isaacs is live in that area with more. I mean, Abby, let's hope it works. Yes, people are cautiously optimistic. We've seen efforts like this in the past to get the midge population under control. People just want it fixed. It's been a problem for over a decade out here and on top of the midge population, millions swarming over the summer. They're also dealing with poor water quality issues. Now, midges are small, non-biting aquatic flies that swarm near the water and marshy areas. They can make summers out here quite intolerable. You can't even open your mouth and it's caused businesses to lose customers. Today, Baltimore County is announcing another effort, a monthly midge suppression, suppression treatment through the fall. Now, advocates say these treatments are short-term fixes because the wastewater treatment plant continues to illegally discharge into the river. In the last month, the state has taken control over the plant from Baltimore City because of significant violations. But even just last week, community groups found extremely high bacterial levels in the water just outside the plant, creating concern about the midge populations as we get closer to the summer. They thrive in environments that where they have uh, exposure to a lot of organic material to feed on and that has low water quality. And because of when, when a, a wastewater treatment plant starts to fail, you really see a massive growth in, uh, in the midge populations. This midge treatment will consist of a helicopter flying low overhead, spraying a naturally occurring bacteria that is not harmful to people, fish or crabs. Now, the county's contractor will actively avoid boaters and any other recreationalists that are out on the water. And the county will also be monitoring the midge populations before and after the treatments. We're live in Essex. Abby Isaacs, WMAR 2 News. All right, Abby, thank you very much. Yeah, hopefully that works because <laughs> those are not fun to deal with. They've been boat. calling for it for sure. Yeah. All right, well, hey, your taxes are due today, but don't panic if you haven't started just yet. Yeah, we're going to talk to Mark Roper. We've got some ideas on the best things to do to keep the IRS off your back here on Tax Day 638 right now. You're watching Good Morning Maryland. Welcome back in. It is 641 right now. Today is the last day to get those taxes filed with the IRS or you can also ask for an extension if you do need more time. Yeah, so you might be a little confused. You're like, well, wait a minute. Tax day is supposed to be April 15th. Right. But not this year. Friday was a holiday in D.C. where the IRS offices are. So you got a few extra days to get your filing done. WMR 2 News Mark Rover is live this morning with a few tips just in case maybe you didn't get them done by today. Mark. Yeah, good morning, Megan and Christian. A few extra days, but still, people still tend to procrastinate. The IRS also is experiencing a major backlog because of staffing shortages and budget constraints. So 
If you're getting a refund and you want it fast, the best thing to do is to avoid the post office altogether and just file it electronically. Now, the IRS encourages taxpayers to file electronically because tax software not only does all of that work for you, it also helps spot any mistakes that you might make. And if you file electronically and use direct deposit, it's the fastest way to get your refund. But if you still haven't started to work on preparing your tax returns for 2021, you're not alone. The IRS estimates 15 million taxpayers will ask for more time to get theirs in. Anyone can request a six month extension, which will give you until October 17th to file. Taxpayers can request an extension on the irs.gov website using form 4868. The IRS advises an extension of time to file is not an extension of time to pay. Taxpayers will have to estimate their tax liability on the extension request form and pay any amount due by April 18th. Otherwise, the IRS will tack on penalties and interest. Taxpayers also can ask for more time by paying some or all of their estimated income tax due. Just note that tax payment is for an extension. Also, taxpayers who do that and pay electronically won't have to file a separate extension form though, and they'll get a confirmation number for their records. But what if you filed already and you're still anxiously awaiting your refund? It's typically gonna take about 21 days if you file electronically to receive your refund. But of course, that's only if you filed electronically. If you did choose to file a paper tax return, it is gonna take a couple of weeks, could be months before you receive your refund. Got live shot. Now, believe it or not, today is also the last day to Much file better. your 2018 Much tax better. return for anyone who hasn't done that yet. Now, the IRS estimates there are one and a half million taxpayers who never filed their 2018 tax return, which means the IRS is sitting on $1.5 billion of that unclaimed tax money. And any taxpayer who doesn't file their 2018 tax return by today, well, the IRS gets to keep it. That money then becomes property of the U.S. Treasury. For you live, Mark Roper, WMAR2 News. Okay, good tips from Mark this morning. Mark, thanks very much. It is 644 right now, and when you lease a vehicle, you do have the option to buy the car outright at the end of that leasing term. But that can wind up being more expensive than you think. Consumer reporter John Mattery shows us why, so you don't waste your money. Tariah Wiley loves the 2019 Honda Civic she leased three years ago. I love it. I mean, I wouldn't have kept it if I didn't like it. So she decided to purchase it when the lease came up, especially since she was originally offered a great buyout, just $15,567. So it was like stated in clear, plain words. It was like no way around it. That was the clear.